Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and today we're going to talk about a new derivative rule called the product rule. Okay, the idea here is in the previous lecture, we learned all sorts of derivative rules. We learned how to take the derivative of exponential functions, of polynomials, of logarithmic functions, of sine and cosine. Okay, but what if the function that you're working with is a little bit more complicated? In particular, the question that we're going to look at today is what if the function that you're looking at is a product of two or more of these simpler types of functions? So a function like sine of x times e to the x or something like that. Those are the types of functions that we're going to learn how to take the derivative of today. So let's see how it works. Um, so first off, remember back, we've already talked about uh, what to do if you take a function that you know and like and multiply it by a scalar. It turns out the derivatives just work out how you hope they would. Okay, All that happens is if you want to take the derivative of a scalar times f, well, take the derivative of f and then multiply by that scalar. Okay, So you just you can pull the scalar outside of the derivative, basically. Okay, But what if we multiply by another function instead of just a scalar, instead of a constant function, what if we multiply by a more exotic function? What happens to the derivative? Okay, and you probably have a first guess in your mind. You might want to just naively guess that something similar to the scalar case happens. You might guess that, hey, the, the derivative of a product, you might guess that it equals the product of the derivative. So you can just take the derivative of the first guy and multiply by the derivative of the second guy. But it turns out that's very, very wrong. Okay, this derivative rule, this fake rule, this non-rule, it doesn't even work if one of the functions is a scalar, right? Imagine what would happen if g was a scalar scalar function, if that just always equaled c, then, well, derivative of a scalar function is zero, so that would be telling you that, hey, the derivative of this product equals derivative of f times zero. So the derivative of this product would be zero, but that's not true. We know that's not true. We know we can pull scalars out of the product, out of the derivative there. Okay, so what's the correct rule? What's the correct way to take the derivative of a product of two functions, okay? And that's what the product rule is. It's the correct rule. It's the correct way to take the derivative of a product. And what it is, is, well, derivative of the product of two functions equals, well, here's the formula. It's derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function, okay? So you're sort of mixing and matching, taking a derivative of a function and not taking a derivative of a function, and then you're adding up those two products, you know, depending on which one you take the derivative of. Okay, so we're gonna do two things going forward from here in this lecture. First, we're gonna go through a bunch of examples to make sure that we're comfortable actually using this formula. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk a little bit about where it actually comes from. Why is this the correct way to take the derivative of a product of two functions? Okay, so the way that you actually use this derivative rule, this product rule, is you combine it with all of those derivative rules that we learned in the previous lecture, okay? So we're gonna still leech off of all of these derivative rules down here that we learned in the previous lecture, okay? So how's it work? Okay, well, let's look at our first example here. Okay, so x squared times e to the power x. What you've got to do is you've got to look at that function and you've got to ask yourself, okay, how can I break that down into a product of two functions which individually I know how to take the derivatives of? Okay, right, I want this to be of the form f of x times g of x where I know how to take the derivative of f and I know how to take the derivative of g. Okay, so here the trick is identifying that, hey, I know how to take the derivative of x squared. Let's make that my f. Okay, so we're, I'm going to say f of x is x squared. And then the other thing, the part that's left over, e to the x, I know how to take the derivative of e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just itself. It's e to the x again. Okay, so I'm going to call that g of x. Okay, and this is sort of the key step to actually getting to use the product rule. You've got to break it down yourself. You've got to identify what the two different functions being multiplied together are. Okay, and then once you've identified them, now it's just plug and chug. Now you just plug into the product rule. Okay, you do the derivative of the first one, x squared, times the second one, e to the x, plus the first one, x squared, times the derivative of the second one, e to the x. Okay, and when you do all of that, this is what you get. I claim you're going to get 2x times e to the x plus x squared times e to the x. Okay, and the reason for that is, well, two of these terms are coming from f. Okay, there's an f prime and there's an f, right? This 2x term here, that's the derivative of x squared. And this x squared is just, well, it's x squared itself. It's f. Okay, and then the other two terms, those are the other half of the product rule. Those are coming from g. Okay, so the first one is just g itself. And then the second one, that's the derivative of g. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x itself. Okay, and then if you like, you can factor and simplify a little bit, okay? We just noticed that, hey, there's an e to the x in both of those terms there, so I've just factored it out to the right, okay? That last step, it's not strictly speaking necessary, it's just I like to simplify things a little bit when I can. 
All right, let's 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 do another example. Let's find the derivative of this function here, one minus kx times sine of x, okay? And again, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to identify how can I break that down into a product of two functions who individually I know how to take the derivative of, all right? So the trick here is just, well, the first function is gonna be one minus kx, and the second function is gonna be sine of x, okay? So that's how I'm gonna break it down. And then once you've broken it down, you're just plugging into the formula for the product rule. Okay, I'm going to take the derivative of the first function, multiply by the second function, and then plus derivative of the first function times the second function. And when I do all of that, here's the answer that I get. Okay, so derivative of this first function. Well, again, I've written this as a function of x. Okay, so k is a constant or a parameter. Okay, the derivative, it's, it's a constant. Okay, it doesn't depend on x. So the derivative of this expression here, well, it's the derivative of one is zero, and the derivative of minus kx is just minus k. Okay, and then times sine of x. Okay, so I just copy that down there. And then plus the first function, one minus kx goes there, times the derivative of the second function. So sine x, when I take its derivative, becomes this cos x. Okay, so those are the four pieces in the product rule, right? f prime times g plus f times g prime. Okay, so that's all I've done. All right, let's do another example. And we're ramping up a little bit this time. This one's a little bit trickier. Okay, this one, I look at that and I wanna break it down into a product of two functions, but this one, it kind of looks like there's three functions, right? There's an x squared and there's a cos x and there's a ln of x. I know how to take the derivative of those three functions individually, but what if I've got a product of all three of them, okay? And the trick is don't get hung up on that, okay? If you've got a product of two functions, you can use the product rule. So just break this up into a product of two functions for now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat x squared as my first function and then cos x ln x as my second function. Okay, and now let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, the product rule then tells me, okay, what I'm gonna get is the derivative of this first function. Well, okay, derivative of x squared is two x times the second function. So times cos x ln x from up here. All right, and then plus the first function, x squared, times the derivative of the second function. So that's what this over here means, d by dx of this thing. That just means take the derivative of that entire product, cos x ln x. Okay, and that that's not a final answer. I'm not done yet. Like, I, I still have to find what is the derivative of cos x ln x. That's not one of my rules from my table. I don't know. So how do I find the derivative of cos x ln x? You use the product rule again, right? This d by dx, find me the derivative of cos x ln x. That could have been an example that I just went through, right? You use the product rule because it's a product of two functions whose derivatives you do know how to find individually. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sort of do the product rule recursively, right? I've already done it once. Now I'm gonna do it again inside the product rule. All right, so how do I find the derivative of this guy? Product rule, so again, I'm gonna identify what's my first function, what's my second function. My first function is cos x, my second fun function is ln x, okay? And now I just go through the product rule and leave all of this other junk there. It's just carrying along for the ride now. Okay, so it ends up, whoop, it's so big it blocks my head. It ends up being a big, ugly mess, but, okay, 2x cos x ln x, that just gets copied down. That goes to there, okay? And then plus x squared times, plus x squared times, and then all this junk in the brackets here, this is my second application of the product rule. This is the derivative of cos x ln x. You do the derivative of the first, so the derivative of cos x, oh, that's minus sine x, times the second, times ln x. Cool. And then plus the first, so plus cos x, ah, there it is, times the derivative of the second, times the derivative of ln x, ah, one over x. Okay, so it looks like a big ugly mess, but it's just the product rule a second time. Okay, so those are the examples we're gonna go through. I want to talk a little bit about where the product rule comes from though, why you should believe it. Okay, so let's think about it geometrically, okay? You can draw a nice picture to sort of motivate it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a rectangle and it's gonna be a rectangle whose size changes over time, okay? So X is gonna be measuring time here. And then F of X and G of X, they're measuring the lengths of the sides of this rectangle. So the rectangle as X or time changes, you know, the rectangle, it's getting bigger, smaller, its side lengths are changing over time. Okay, well, the area of that rectangle, it's just length times width, right? So it's just f of x times g of x. And then the question is, what's the derivative of that product? In other words, what's the derivative or rate of change of this area? 
Well, let's try to reason about that, okay? So I'm gonna draw a sort of a second rectangle here. This first rectangle, that's still, you know, the rectangle at time x, okay? But then this bigger rectangle, that's the rectangle at time x plus h, after, you know, the input or time has changed to just a little bit. Okay, so then the question is, well, what happens to the area after time changes just a little bit? What is the rate at which the area is changing? And to answer this question, I'm gonna split it up a little bit, okay? So I've added a couple extra lines here, and I'm gonna think about how quickly is this area changing, how quickly is this area changing, and how quickly is this area changing? I'm gonna tackle those three areas one at a time, and then just add up my answers, and that will tell me what is the rate of change of the entire area that I actually care about. Okay, so for this first area, this, this area over on the right here, this one, the rate of change, to try to convince yourself what the rate of change is, ask yourself how quickly are its two sides changing? Well, this sort of long side going up and down, how tall is that? Well, the height is just g of x. It's not changing at all, okay? But this width here down at the bottom, that side is changing, okay? The rate of change of that side is just the rate of change of f. It's just the derivative of f. So the overall rate of change of the area over here is just the product of those two things. It's f prime times g. All right, what about the top side? Okay, what if we look at this top rectangle over here? What's the rate of change of that rectangle? Well, this time, this bottom side is not changing. The length of that bottom side, this length here, is just f of x, okay? It's constant, okay? But then this short side here, it is changing, okay? It's changing at the rate that g is changing. In other words, the rate of change over here is just g prime, the derivative of g. So the rate of change of this area is just then the product of those two things. It's this constant f of x times g prime of x. Okay, and then what about the top right corner? This one's a little bit trickier to justify geometrically here. Here we're getting into territory where really I probably should be writing down more explicit formulas and doing a limit calculation, but you can sort of convince yourself maybe that this little area up here, it's gonna be a lot smaller than this area and it's gonna be a lot smaller than this area. It turns out that in the limit as h is going to zero, right, the amount by which x has increased, in the limit as that goes to zero, this rate of change of increase in the area over here, it's gonna contribute nothing. In the limit, that area over there contributes exactly zero. Okay, so then overall, the rate of change of this entire area is just the sum of these three quantities. It's f of x times g prime plus zero plus f prime times g of x. Okay, and that's exactly what the product rule says. It says the rate of change of this is the sum of these three things. All right, so that's enough for today. Uh, I will see you next lecture when we talk about another derivative rule, something called the chain rule, which also, it's just another way of helping us take derivatives of more compli complicated combinations of functions than we're able to do yet. So I will see you then.